In this video, we're going to be talking about using our dialog system's variables some more. So you might have noticed that I changed my script around a little bit. It is now what is possibly the worst dating sim in the history of the world, and not just because I'm the capture target. If we hit play, let's see what we get. Hello, I'm Esferia. What is your name? Nice to meet you. Esferia's affection is now at zero, and we have three options. Give them a gift, ignore them, or ask them out. If we give them a gift, it says, thanks, I appreciate it. And it goes back to the uh, affection level is now at zero. If we ignore them, it's just dot dot dot. And back to now at zero. And if we ask them out, they say, okay, sure. Happy end. There were a lot of issues with that. First off, we never actually asked you for your name. We're going to be dealing with that in the next video. Um, secondly, the affection is always saying zero. It doesn't actually get our affection level and displays it in our text. And thirdly, we started by saying, okay, sure, right away. So let's fix that last one first. We will do that by going to our enter conditions here in between our selector and our speech node. We'll add a condition and it's going to be a strong call. It's going to be an int call. The int we're going to be checking is Aspheria's and the name of that int will be affection. And we're going to be able to enter if it is greater or equal to, let's say, 5. Let's save and we hit play. Nothing happens because of a small bug that happens with this uh, plugin. Really easy to fix. You, well, it's really easy to work around. If you go back to our level blueprint where we add our participants, we just add another pin and drag our participant back in here. Compile, save, or sorry, not save, and play again and it should start. There it is. Uh, so, hello, I'm Asphere. What is your name? Nice to meet you. Affection at zero. Ask them out. Um, sorry, no. So, because our affection is not greater or equal to 5, we no longer can say OK, sure. But how does it know what our affection is? Well, if we go back to our participant, you'll notice that in our interfaces, dialog callback, there is a get int value here. Sorry, this is from the previous take. <clears throat> there, is a get, there is a get int value here. If we double click this, we can override it. And based on the value name, we can return a well value. So what we're going to do with this value name, we're going to switch on it, and we can add a pin. Right now there's only the default. We can add a pin over here, or in your case it might be on the right side, but we can add a pin by clicking this plus sign and that pin's name is going to be affection. Save. So anytime the dialog uh, looks at our variables, and the name of that variable is affection over here. This is what's going to fire off. And when this fires off, we want to return a variable. And that variable is going to be affection. So let's give our participant a new variable. We'll call this affection. And we can just return that. Otherwise, we will just return zero, as usual. If we compile and save, and let's drag this out so we can see it. Uh, we're going to be debugging our participant, and if we hit play, when we get to our asset area out, you'll notice that the get in value fires off, and it fires off the affection because it knows that we're looking for our affection over here. Ask us it out again, you'll notice it firing off again. <clears throat> so how do we actually modify this affection through our dialogue? Well, we would do that, let's say, over here when we give them a gift. So if we choose to give them a gift, we would enter, thanks I appreciate it, and then on the entry events we'd want to modify our int. We need that by clicking this plus sign over here next to enter events, uh, clicking the drop down on the zero. The participant name is Aspheria. Aspheria. We're going to be modifying an int, and that int is going to be affection. And how much we're going to modify it is 1. And because we're modifying it by an amount, instead of making it an amount, we're going to hit this plus sign on the delta. If we hit save and press play, and we give them a gift 5 times, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you'll notice that they still say no. That's because it can't, well, it can, but in this case, it can't just modify, it can't just magically modify our affection value. 
we have to tell our participant how to do that. So if we go to our modify int value over here, we can override this functionality. And we will say switch on the value name, switch on name. Once again, add a pin for affection. And what we're gonna say is if it's a delta, so branch on delta, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our affection and we're going to add our value to our affection. And we're going to set our affection as that. So set affection over here, like that. However, it is not delta, and as a way that we just want to set our variable, we can just set our affection, set affection to be our value. And then we return. Uh, also return on this default. This return, um, this boolean here, it's irrelevant. It's ignored. Um, it, yeah, just ignore that. We don't have to specify whether it's true or not. So now if we hit play, and we give them five gifts. One, two, three, four, five. And we ask them out. They say, okay, sure. So, I mentioned earlier that we can't just have it magically modify our int. So why would we possibly go through and make all this functionality? Well, if we wanted to say clamp our affection, clamp between 0 and 5, because we never want it to go be zero, below 0 and we never want it to go above 5, we could do that. Um, sorry, clamp over here, clamp over here. We could do that. However, if we don't care about that, we could do this the alternate way, which is using a class variable. So let's get rid of all this, because we really don't need it in this case. We would also use this if we want certain things to happen when we modify our int value, like calling other functions and stuff like that, but um, we'll get to... Those are very specific use cases that we might get to later. Uh, get rid of these... Like that. So our get int value and our modify int value are back to doing nothing at all. However, we still have this uh, variable called affection over here. So if we go back to our test dialog and get rid of this um, enter event, and we go back to our conditions and get rid of that condition. What we can do is we can give it a condition and instead of saying check int call, we will check class int variable over here. The owner of that um, variable is this free again and if we hit the drop down, nothing shows up. Actually, affection does show up. Why is that? Oh, that's why. Um, this is left over from my previous take on this video. I meant to X that out. If we X that out and then we go back here, go to our variable name, you'll notice that nothing shows up. That's because our dialog doesn't know that Espheria is a participant. Remember, it's, um, in order to let our dialog know who is a participant and not, we just use a interface. And an interface can be attached to any class. So it doesn't know what specific class it is, so it doesn't know that it's a participant, and it has a variable named affection. To fix that, we can go back to our dialog, click anywhere that's not on a node, and you'll notice that in our DLC, uh, DLG participant classes, there is our participant's participant name is Sphiria, and in our participant class, we can change it to participant. If we save that, go back to our enter event, go back to our variable name, you'll notice that affection now shows up because it knows that Isferia is a participant and participant has an int called affection. Uh, once again, we want this to be greater or equal to 5. So compile, uh, save that I mean. And in our modify, where we where we would modify that int, we go to our enter events, add a plus sign, and we will participant name is Isferia. The event type is now modify class int variable. The variable's name is affection, and we're going to modify it by one with a delta. Also, if we choose to ignore them, we're going to make an enter event. This is going to be spheria uh, modify class int into the affection. The int value is zero, and it's not going to be a delta. So if we ignore them, it just drops it down to zero, basically. Save. And if we hit play now, 
give them one, two, three, four, five gifts, ask them out, they say yes. So that's how we would use our class variables um, in our dialog. We would only do this though if we really don't want to do anything other than adding or setting our um, class int. If we want to do anything like clamping it or firing off any other events when we set our int, we would use the other option of modify int instead of modify class int. That's just something to keep in mind. Save this. Now the last thing we want to fix is our affection always says it's zero. So press play, gift gift, and affection still at zero. So let's fix that. That's really simple. We just click on our um, text node or a speech note, I mean, around our zero. Instead, let's change this to a, uh, let's go with affection. And we can wrap affection with curly brackets. And when we do, we'll notice that, sorry, these are not curly brackets. These are, uh, well, I don't remember what they're called, but these are curly brackets. And then you'll notice that under text arguments, we now have a text argument. The display name of that argument is affection. So if we were to change, if we were to change affection to say like X, it would now display as X. I'm gonna go back to affection though. Makes it more clear when we're just looking at our text in here. And the affection is gonna be checking its various, uh, well, it's gonna be checking its various variable and the variable type is going to be a class int variable and the variable name is affection so if we save hit play affection is at zero give a gift affection is now at one give a gift affection is now at two three four and now we ignore them and it drops back down to zero so that's how you can work with um ver that's how you can yeah work with variables in with our dialog system You'll notice that when we check our um, variable type, there's display name, so that would be just what we set in our get participant display name over here. There's the gender um, and dialog int variable, which would be the way we did it before with the manually setting up our setters and getters for our variable. There's a dialog float variable, which is the same thing except for floats class float variable, which is the same thing except for floats again, and class text variable. You notice that there is no cla um, class string variable or participant, or I mean dialog string variable, and that's because, or name variable I mean, that's because when you modify your events, let's say modify event type, we're going to modify, we can either modify int, float, bool or name. There is no text we can modify. So um, under text arguments, uh, text just won't show up for here. We have to get the class text variable. That's something to keep in mind for the next video, however. So let's just save and when the video's there.